We humans rely on dogs and other animals to assist us with a range of tasks on a daily basis. But the world we have constructed for ourselves doesn't take into account the requirements. In this rapidly developing world, technology increasingly provides better ways for us to interact with our environments. For example, we can now use our computers by touch or enjoy our entertainment consoles with simple gestures in the air. But the animals who assist us lack the most basic support to do their life-saving jobs. The development of interacting technology for humans usually follows a user-centered design process in which prospective users are directly involved to make sure that their requirements and preferences are taken into account and the final product is what the user needs. Likewise, we need to develop user-centered approaches to the design of technology intended for animals to ensure that the final product is what they need to do the job. This then raises two questions. First, how can we design technology that meets an animal's requirement? And second, how can we involve the animal in the design process as a legitimate technology user and design contributor? The Animal Computer Interaction Research Programme was established precisely to address these questions by studying the interaction between animals and technology in contemporary society, by designing technology that can support animals in different ways, and by developing research approaches that allow animals to actively participate in design processes. Let us take the example of a dog having to open a door. This is something which assistant dogs do all the time, but which is a significant challenge for them because door handles are designed to be operated by hands equipped with fingers and opposable thumbs. While it is possible to train dogs to do such tasks, it takes time and money to do so, and regardless of the amount of training, dogs remain at a disadvantage. Therefore, would it not be sensible to just change the way we design certain technologies to make them more accessible to the dogs who will need to use them. Of course, to do this, a key challenge is for us to learn to see and think of the world from an animal's point of view. Once we develop a clear understanding of the way animals see our world, we can use this knowledge to inform the design process. To achieve such an understanding, we have to consider what we know about the characteristics of a particular animal, the type of tasks they are required to do, and of course the particular preferences of an individual animal. Based on that, we can design alternative prototypes, we can then test these with the animal and let them show which they prefer. We should also consider what a dog does naturally in order to make it easier for them. For example, dogs tend to manipulate things with their mouths rather than with their paws and they use their nose a lot. So the interface of an alarm designed for an alert dog will be designed to allow the dog to grab it with his mouth. Alongside our research into animal interactions with technology in the home, we also have been researching other ways in which technology can support animals who assist humans, for example, in the area of medical diagnosis. With appropriate training, some dogs can recognize volatiles of cancer cells in biological samples and signal back to their handler whether they have found anything. However, sometimes it may be difficult for the handler to understand what the dog is signaling. So we are developing an interactive prototype to allow the dogs to signal with less ambiguity what they have found and how confident they are by exploiting the behavior that dogs perform naturally when they sniff something. Some ways in which technology can be adapted for dogs are rather obvious. Um, one is to do with their physical height, for example. Because dogs are typically much smaller than an average human, it makes sense to bring technology down to their level. Why should a dog have to climb up to open a door when a door opening switch can easily be positioned at their height? However, other areas um, are less obvious. For example, while most humans have trichromatic vision, and can see red, blues and yellows in equal measure, 
Dogs have diachromatic vision and can only see colors in the blue and yellow spectrum. Much of our world is invisible or visually confusing to dogs. While it's common for humans to recognize the red button of an alarm compared to the green button of an automatic door, a dog cannot tell the difference. We can use this knowledge to ensure that the colors we use in our prototypes are ones that a dog can easily recognize. In short, our research is based on three fundamental assumptions. One, technology is not just for humans, but it is for whoever may benefit from it, regardless of their species. Two, if we expect anyone to do a job for us, we have a responsibility to support them in their tasks. Three, good interaction design is informed by the characteristics of the user, whatever this might be.